Romania. What do we know of this country? In reality, very little. However, we've become aware of a culture impregnated with surprising traditions and histories. We have in mind images of haunted castles and vampires, but we are far from the truth. Here, there are numerous oral traditions that allude to ancient civilizations, as well as numerous archaeological discoveries that seek to cover them up. To better understand the myths of this country, we will go off the beaten track and meet with often contested researchers and experts, some of whom have dedicated their entire lives to bring to light these discoveries and re-establish truths long since hidden. We will reveal ancient sanctuaries, mysterious treasures, and unusual archaeological objects that can bring into question our entire history. Have there been previous civilizations with a very advanced knowledge? Could humans have co-inhabited the Earth with giants? Our research will take you to out-of-the-way places where myth and reality cross paths. There is somewhere, 1,200 meters up, that's 4,000 feet, a sanctuary that attests to the presence of an ancient civilization, the Dacians. During the Roman occupation, the Carpathian people withdrew there to make their last stand. And what we have discovered there will shake up the established truth. Sami Sejitusa, known as the Romanian Stonehenge, is listed by UNESCO as a World Heritage Site. Now in ruins, this sanctuary was once the ancient capital of the Dacians, one of the original peoples of Romania. This military supply fortress was comprised of five terraces that extended to more than 30,000 square meters. Inside it contained living accommodation, stables and storage facilities, all served by a complex water supply system. The city temples did not survive the wars. Only fragments of andesite rock proves their presence. Archaeological excavations attest that the inhabitants enjoyed a high standard of living. Here the buildings benefited from modern installations a long time before the Romans interfered with the Dacian culture. But Sami Zegetusa was much more than a simple city. The Dacians took their knowledge from an influential priest, Diseu. Initiated in Egypt to the same degree as Thales, Pythagoras and Plato. Some credit him with the building of this city during the first century BCE. Sami Sejitusa was also the site of an astronomical observatory. It is said that the priests mastered cosmology and established the positions of the planets. Their science of the stars governed decisions relating to future wars, the cultivation of the land and voyages to undertake. Deceneu fiind un inițiat care a călătorit și în Egipt, unde a primit inițieri de la preoții care cunoșteau tainele piramidelor, Deceneu, spunând că el i-a învățat pe Daci, acum 2100 de ani, științele fizicii, medicina, astronomia, astrologia și alte lucruri. Este semnificativ că aici, la Sami Zegetuza, găsim prezența proporției de aur a numărului de aur în mai toate construcțiile, o înțelegere a universului. The largest sanctum in the citadel measures 30 meters, or 98 and a half feet in diameter, and is composed of three concentric circles. This astronomical temple doubled as a calendar, reputed to have been one of the most precise in all antiquity, with a margin of error of one hour, 15 minutes and three seconds per year. Next to it, a circular andesite flagstone comprised of 10 spokes acted as a solar dial that allowed the Dacians to predict the solstices and equinoxes. Historians know very little about the Dacians and attribute to them a very limited degree of knowledge. Many affirm that they did not possess the written word. This polemic affirmation divides many researchers. 
According to some, it is impossible for a so-called primitive civilization to have knowledge of stars and science. However, one very controversial discovery attests that they were not as archaic as history states. Discovered in 1875 under the reign of King Carol I, the tablets of Sinea suggest that the Dacians did in fact possess the written word. 500 of these tablets were found at the end of the 19th century during the construction of the castle of Pelasur. Originally fashioned in gold, they show three different types of writing. One resembles a form of ancient Greek, but the other two remain unknown. To get the gold, King Carol had copies of them made in lead before melting down the originals. Cette forme de grec ancien a permis de traduire quelques mots sur certaines tablettes. Du coup, on pense qu'elle mettra en lumière les chroniques de Décébal, qui était un roi d'As, et elle mentionna aussi la cité de Zarmizegetusa. En plus, certains signes qu'on y trouve présentent des similarités avec le style arabique, et les historiens et archéologues évoquent également des personnages aux allures de rois perses et arméniens. However, their authenticity is quickly contested by historians. It is inconceivable for them that they could assemble three different styles of writing. More so, if we have not discovered similar writings, then they had simply been invented. Pourtant, elles sont pas les seules à mettre en lumière trois types d'écritures différentes, et on en a la preuve avec la pierre de Rosette, qui a permis de déchiffrer les hiéroglyphes égyptiens. Et certains chercheurs affirment que si elles avaient été authentiques, elles n'auraient pas été fondues, car elles auraient été trop importantes pour l'histoire. Le roi Carol, qui était déjà immensément riche, n'aurait pas eu besoin de l'or, des tablettes. The verdict is without doubt. They cannot be authentic. For historians, they were just a joke. The story could have stopped right here, but in the last few years, a number of them have disappeared, suddenly reigniting the controversy surrounding their true nature. Un cercetător român, Dan Romalo, a reușit să aibă acces la Institutul de Arheologie și să fotografieze 200 de astfel de tablițe. Ei bine, În urmă cu câțiva ani, când am fost la Institutul de Arheologie din București, am mai găsit 34. Sute de astfel de tablițe au dispărut fără urmă, fără ca cineva să poată să fie tras la răspundere, pentru că ele nefiind înregistrate, practic putem considera că pentru instituțiile statului nici nu existau. În primul rând este cu argumentație logică. Cineva care dorea să creeze o confuzie istorică nu avea nevoie să facă sute de astfel de plăcuțe, ci era suficient să facă cinci și crea confuzia istorică dacă asta își propusese. Is the disappearance of these tablets linked to their containing a message and mysterious inscriptions? Or maybe they show that the Dacians were not so primitive. But what were they really? In Romania, the Dacian people speak a lot about it. But according to historians, it is as though they came from nowhere. To understand their origins, we must go back to an era where the Thracian territory extended east to modern-day Germany and south to the Caspian Sea. Very little is known of this civilization, only that it was divided into hundreds of tribes, of which the most important was the Dacians, known as the Jete by the ancient Greeks in modern-day Romania. The Greeks were the first to document the exploits of the Thracians, the philosophical texts by the likes of Herodotus and Plato are full of praise for them. Excellent horsemen and remarkable combatants, their temperament was a veritable asset for the Greeks during the siege of Troy. They were also found at Alexander the Great's side during his campaigns and conquests. Far from the derogatory cliches, the skill of the Thracians in gold and silver demonstrates an undeniable artistic refinement and invokes an accomplished civilization. Atunci când vorbim despre traci, care în multe rânduri au fost prezentate în mod oficial ca o populație barbară, primitivă, descoperim de fapt o cultură excepțională care în anumite momente a influențat cultura greacă în mod major. Practic, atunci când vorbim despre Orfeu, Dionisos, Apollo, Artemis și alte divinități sau tradiții grecești, trebuie să subliniem că acestea au fost împrumutate de greci de la populațiile tracice. It is said that in Thracian mythology, Zeus was called Zebelizes. Artemis is enshrouded in the traits of Bendis. 
Zamazios became Dionysus, just as Apollo originated as Orpheus, god of mythology of the art of divination. Each of the Greek and Roman gods traces their origins to the Thracian divinities. The Greeks were inspired by these people in their lifestyle and their philosophy. Spune foarte clar, făcând trimitere la geți, unul dintre neamurile tracice călătorește la geți nu ca să le dai legi, ci ca să tragi învățăminte de la ei. La geți, câmpurile sunt nesfârșite, toate pământurile sunt comune și dintre toate popoarele sunt cei mai înțelepți, ne spune Homer. Am încheiat citatul. But this civilization, with its inestimable resources, was to be coveted by a Rome that was being crushed by its debts. After many wars, Rome came to destabilize the Thracian nation and conquer part of its territory. The last tribe to resist the invasion retreated to the Carpathian Mountains in Dacia. Tough and immovable, their emblem was the wolf, symbol of intelligence, liberty and insubordination. Associated with the snake, it forms the Dacian Draco that would become renowned. Seeing that they were a minority in the face of the Romans, the Dacians made no compromise. They saw only to Zalmuxis, a divine priest, who persuaded them that to die on the battlefield led to immortality. A formidable belief which undermined the Roman soldiers. It is at Salmis Zekatutza that they delivered their final battle. The citadel, the ultimate resistance to the Roman invasion, sheltered Disabilus, the last king and general of the Dacians. Despite the competitiveness of his army, they ceded in face of the power of the Roman Emperor Trajan and chose to die to exceed Zalmux's paradise. Les Dacs ont fini par perdre face à Rome, mais de tous les peuples d'Europe, c'est quand même un des rares à avoir résisté aussi férocement à l'envahisseur. Et c'est pas un hasard si leur symbole c'est le loup. Ça illustre vraiment cet esprit de révolte. Et alors, en parlant de révolte, l'anecdote intéressante, c'est que lorsqu'on sait que le royaume s'étendait jusqu'en Phrygie, qui est donc une partie de la, la Turquie d'aujourd'hui, on peut faire le rapprochement avec les bonnets pourpres qu'ils portaient, appelés donc les bonnets phrygiens que portaient les révolutionnaires français en 1789, mais aussi repris dans d'autres révolutions partout dans le monde. C'est un symbole qui est vraiment fort, et c'est vrai que beaucoup d'entre nous en ignorent véritablement les origines. Despite being victorious, Emperor Trajan honored the Dacians in erecting imposing statues in Rome. They expressed force and bravery, a startling sign of recognition by a Roman emperor. Si on va plus loin, le détail le plus explicite de cette reconnaissance pourrait être le symbole fort de la louve qui allait être Rémus et Romulus. La louve mère, le symbole de la patrie d'As, et les deux bébés symbolisant Rome. Mais quand on voit que la légende poétique d'un loup qui allait être deux enfants est acceptée et officiellement reconnue, on doit se poser la question de ce qui est le plus logique et le plus rationnel, à savoir l'image d'un loup qui nourrit et élève deux enfants, ou bien la version symbolique qui tend à démontrer que la culture d'As aurait pu nourrir, sous-entendu, influencer l'Empire romain. Being up to 3 meters, 9 foot 10 inches tall, our attention is drawn to the exceptional scale of these statues, larger than those erected in memory of Roman warriors. Naturally, the most logical explanation is that the Emperor Trajan admired the bravery of this nation. However, a second theory has come to haunt the spirit of more and more enthusiasts. Is it conceivable that some of these statues were in fact life-size? This idea that crosses our minds sounds foolhardy, yet we are not the only ones to think it. Several discoveries show that some of the Dacian warriors could indeed have been this size. In Bucharest, the Natural History Museum harbors an exceptional treasure. Delicate gold and silver sculptures confirm the mastery of these materials that this nation possessed. 
certain jewelry from Sama Zekatusa that almost 2,000 years later contained treasures that have never yet been excavated. Among this decorative jewelry, including brooches and necklaces, are found some stunning bracelets. Their diameters vary between 9 and 13 centimeters, 3.5 to 5 inches, and weighing anything from 700 grams to more than a kilogram. That's 24 to 35 ounces. They're made of several loops comprising of snakes' heads. Cold forged from gold bars, they demonstrate a complex and very elaborated technicality. Romanian archaeology alleges that these bracelets were used for rituals or reserved for a certain elite of Dacians. But for now, it's their size that concerns us. Si on part du principe que c'était des bracelets de poignet et non pas de bras, on constate qu'ils sont anormalement grands et qu'ils ne correspondent pas au diamètre de poignet d'être humain ordinaire. On pourrait penser qu'ils étaient portés au bras, mais même dans ce cas de figure, ils sont beaucoup trop longs. S'il s'avère en effet qu'ils étaient portés au bras, alors ceux qui les portaient devaient être très grands. On peut en déduire qu'ils devaient mesurer très facilement plus de 2 mètres de hauteur, si ce n'est plus. According to historians, these bracelets were worn by the highest ranking Dacians, and without wanting to play with words, these highest must have been very tall. This partially broken helmet has a diameter of around 30 centimeters, 12 inches, almost twice the size of an ordinary head. Specialists allege that they were worn on top of other helmets. What is to be made of this ceremonial breastplate that no ordinary shoulder would be able to wear, and whose length measures almost 80 centimeters, 31 and a half inches? Just below, a ring with a diameter of three centimeters. That's more than an inch. And it's the same for this gold crown of unequaled finesse, which too has a very large diameter. It would have belonged to King Suths III and came from his tomb in Bulgaria. Bizarrely, the remains of this king have never been found. Did giants once walk these lands? Un épisode de l'histoire romaine en territoire trace mentionne l'existence d'un berger devenu ensuite empereur qui s'appelait Maximin Trax et il avait une taille qui dépassait les 2,50 mètres de hauteur. In 190 BCE, in modern-day Bulgaria, Roman soldiers met with something strange. In front of them stood a Thracian shepherd who towered over them by several head heights. This colossus joined the Roman garrison where he rose through the ranks to become emperor in 235 AD. Many think that this description of Maximinus is exaggerated, and unless one day we find his skeleton, his real size will remain unknown. Si cet empereur avait réellement cette taille, on pourrait envisager que d'autres soldats tout aussi grands, peut-être même plus encore, auraient pu eux aussi exister. Ça pourrait peut-être expliquer la taille hors norme de certains bijoux qui ont été retrouvés. On the Sinea tablets, one engraving could confirm it. It puts into evidence a scene where men came face to face with giants. On their shield, a significant symbol indicates that they originated from the legendary continent of Hyperborea. An ancient map by Gerard Mercator, dated 1595, locates the original country of the Hyperboreans in the remote areas of the North Pole. According to ancient texts, these lands were not at that time covered in ice. Les légendes, les chroniques anciennes disent que la première civilisation qui a existé s'appelle Hyperborea. Hyperborée était situé au niveau des pôles. Et ce peuple hyperboréen, s'il a existé bien sûr au sens propre, est descendu donc vers le sud. Donc est descendu euh, en plusieurs endroits, il y a eu plusieurs branches. Une branche serait allée vers le Caucase. Hein? Donc la nouvelle capitale des hyperboréens s'appelle Asgard et s'est située dans le Caucase. Une autre serait partie vers le Tibet. Et une troisième serait allée dans des archipels euh, situés euh, au niveau du golfe du Mexique aujourd'hui qui donne naissance à l'Atlantide. Homer equally alleged that the new Borea was situated in Thracia and that the Hyperborea was situated in the north of Thracia where the Dacians used to live. The Greek legends state that the descendants of Borea, the Boreads, were giant kings measuring more than four meters, 13 feet in height. If in those days, men of gigantic dimensions existed, we understand now why they fascinated the Romans so much and inspired the Emperor Trajan to erect these famous statues. Official history does not mention skeletons of large dimensions that would confirm this hypothesis. However, other anecdotal evidence does draw attention to it. It is not impossible that certain archeological discoveries could have willingly been ignored. To understand more, we have to go off the beaten track, to dig 
look for more clues and go against the tide of perceived ideas. In the southwest of Bucharest, a discovery passed almost unnoticed that will undermine our understanding of history. 